Presbyterian Church on this beautiful Lord's Day, this Confirmation Sunday, and this Mother's Day. Welcome to all of you, especially to our guests and visitors. If you would like to know more about our congregation, find someone with a John Knox name tag on it. Ask them after the service or find one of the ministers. And we would be more than happy to share with you a little bit about our family of faith. As we begin our time of worship together, there are a few announcements that I would like to draw your attention to. Next weekend, you will see that Justin Hazel will be the pastor on call for us. Uh, Justin is now serving over at First Presbyterian in Greer. But with all three of the pastors here being out uh, next Friday and Saturday, Justin has graciously agreed to cover for us if there is any pastoral emergency. Please also note in the bulletin a number of upcoming events and their times and dates, from Presbyterian Women Meetings to Young at Heart to Relay for Life. Uh, please note all of those. Also note for Vacation Bible School, uh, the fee per child is $5 if you want to sign your child up. And for VBS, it's $5 until next Sunday, the 17th, and then the price goes up. $10. So this is your reminder to get your money in now uh, rather than waiting. Also, the Presbyterian community in Easley is looking for assistance <coughs> for anyone who's willing to spend some time with residents who are in assisted living. And if you uh, feel led to do that, we'll at least want to know more about it and see if that might be something you would be interested in doing. You can contact Karen Nichols at the number that is in the bulletin as well. So please make note of that. Also, you have two inserts in your bulletin. One is our Mother's Day offering envelope, and you can place this in the offering plate later on if you would like to make an offering for Mother's Day. Uh, so please note that. Also, there should be a yellow sheet in your bulletin. This is for our Congregational Nominating Committee that you have elected the other week. They are beginning their work, and as they begin their work, they need your help to find nominees to serve on the upcoming class of elders for session, as well as a trustee. You'll note on the back a list of current session members and current trustees. These folks, uh, because of our bylaws, cannot serve consecutive terms. So these folks are ineligible to be nominated, but if they're not on this list, chances are they can be nominated. You can list elders or trustees and place that in the offering plate as well or drop by the church office. And those will be collected and studied by our nominating committee. I believe that those are the announcements this morning, so let us together join in our call to worship, which is printed in the bulletin. Who are you? I am a child of God. Who are we? We are children of God, family of faith. What does it mean to be a child of God? We belong to God, who loves us, and calls us God. In life and death, we belong to God. Let us worship God together. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, on this beautiful day we gather together as your people to go about the work of worship. Make your spirit known to us in this time as we sing your praises, as we offer our prayers and our thanks, as we celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ together. This we pray in his holy name, and together pray the prayer that he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
remain standing, I invite you to join with me in the prayer of confession that is printed in our bulletin. We will follow that with a time of silent confession and reflection together. Let us go to God confessing our sins. Merciful God, we give you thanks, for you have created us to live together in love and freedom in you, with one another and with the world. You have made us in your image and endowed us with gifts of reason.
Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for moms. We also thank you for Jesus Christ. Give us strength and knowledge and trust so that we can tell others about Jesus Christ. We ask this in his name. church, 
We talked about that fun and exciting topic of Presbyterian politics. We talked about scripture and what it means to us as people of faith, specifically in the Reformed tradition. We talked about the Trinity and that difficult to understand but so comforting view of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We discussed the sacraments in our church that we have too. We have the Lord's Supper and today we can celebrate together the sacrament of baptism. And we talked about the significance and symbolism of those sacraments. We closed our time together to discussing what it means to be an active member of a church. Not just someone who has been accepted into John Knox as a member, but someone who makes a difference. Someone who's alive and who's sharing their spiritual gifts that God's given them to be a, a vital and active part of our congregation. We talk about obedience to God's Word, how we trust in Him and we trust in the promises for eternity made through Him concerning our faith in Jesus Christ. And then after all this talk and education, we finally in mid-April closed the class out by being examined by our elders. The students sat down with uh, three people from our session who asked them questions and they had great discussions about faith and what they've learned in their class. And they were all unanimously approved to uh, be accepted in as members of John Knox. And then finally, after all this hard work, we closed with some time of fun. Last was last Friday, we went bowling. We did some cosmic bowling together. It was probably some of the most pitiful bowling ever done in Greenville County, especially about me. But we had the best time. I think Sarah Mullis for going with us and the kids for having a great time to eat some pizza and unwind and bowl. We came back here and ran around the church till we couldn't stand it anymore at about 3 in the morning playing games, but we had a great lock in together. So this was a long process, but it was a vital process. It's a process where they learn in a world that sends us so many mixed messages to finally be able to stand up and say with assurance what they believe. And I'm so proud of how they did and the hard work they put into it. I told them they were the best class, the best attendance we've ever had with the confirmation class. Most of them made each and every one of them. And their statements of faith are so wonderful because they're personal. They're right on the mark, but you can see their heart in every word that they say. So I'm so proud of them. So I want to give them a little charge before they get up here and read a, a few uh, scripture uh, lessons here for each one of them to think about as they, as they go forward in their walk in faith. First from Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. I pray for all of you that you feel the peace of God and the blessings from Him as you walk out of this place today and throughout the rest of your lives as members of this church. And from Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. Teacher, which commandment and the law is the greatest? He said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. If we didn't learn anything else as a class, I want you all to always remember, love the Lord with everything you have. And do the same with your neighbor. And I promise you, all will go well with you. And from 2 Timothy chapter 4, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As you go out into the world in your lives growing up these next few years, you're going to hear a lot of wild stories. You're going to hear a lot about faith, and a lot about not being faithful. And I want you to remember the lessons you've learned here from vacation Bible school to the time you graduate here at John Knox. Trust in God's Word. Ask questions of your family and your teachers here, your ministers if you have questions. Lean on sound doctrine and don't be afraid to tell others what you believe. God will give you the words to say. He'll give you the confidence and patience. But do it out of love. Don't do it with an angry heart. We 
don't meet people over the head with the Word of God, but it's a loving gift that we share with them. So share the gospel with everyone you meet. And some of the most comforting words in Scripture from Romans chapter 8. Know in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Remember, even when you don't think you have the strength and the courage to carry on, when times get tough in life, when you struggle, when you ask questions about your faith, remember that when you receive that gift of faith, God will hold you in His arms. He'll never let you go. And He'll always love you. So y'all are tired of hearing me talk. I want to hear them have their statements of faith. So I'm going to ask first our first speaker to come forward. And uh, Graham, Graham, come forward for our first statement today. When I found out I was going to speak this morning, I started trying to figure out what I wanted to say. What is my statement of faith? One week ago, I was getting ready for a scout camping trip. And thinking about my boy scout motto, be prepared. Before heading out to camp, I made sure I packed my backpack for the weekend. I had to pack a lot. I carefully packed my backpack. Clothes, rain gear, first aid kit, flashlight, and water bottles. I made sure I was wearing the right clothes and shoes, and I studied my trail map and had my compass ready when I left. I was prepared. I was ready to do what was necessary for whatever comes along. If you have ever been camping, you know how important it is to be prepared. There are many situations you cannot predict. Rain, getting lost on the trail, bug bites, poison ivy. But as long as I am properly prepared, I will be able to handle any situation. Just as the Boy Scouts teaches me to be prepared, so does the Bible. I want to be prepared to step out into the world each day, ready to live a life pleasing to God. Just like putting my hiking gear on, the Bible says in Ephesians to prepare every day by putting on the whole of armor of God. What is this armor? It includes the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, feet fitted with the gospel of God, and the, the shield of our faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. I wear the right clothes to hike, so doesn't it make sense to wear the right armor every day to protect me and help me live close to God? Of course, as I mentioned, I never start off out on a hike without studying my map and packing my compass. I need to be just as diligent with studying my Bible. The Bible is my map and the spiritual compass to guide me through life. I don't want to get lost. I, if I don't want to get lost, I need to follow it. It also serves as a lamp onto my feet and a light onto my path. If you have ever hiked at night, you know how important the flashlight is. The Bible lights up our path and keeps us safely on the trail. <coughs> I would never be on a backpacking trip without first putting on all the right clothes, bringing all the right tools, and preparing for the trip. Why then would I ever journey through the adventure of life without all the God has given me to protect myself and guide me along the way? Life is an exciting journey, and I have the whole adventure ahead of me. I plan to be prepared for whatever comes along. I will put on the whole armor of God to protect me and follow His spiritual compass. I will use the Bible as my body to stay safely on the trail. I also know I have you as my church family to help me along the way of my journey. I can't imagine this journey without God's guidance in my life. Where life, wherever life might take me, whatever obstacles I find along the way, with God's help and guidance, I will be prepared. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Ben Jackson. And uh, you often hear stories of people finding God and how they became Christians. The story usually focuses on an event in their life that changed everything they believed in. And in my case, I do not have an exciting story to share. What I mean is since I was born into a Christian family and raised here in John Knox, I don't have a story like theirs to tell. What I do know is that in God's eyes, how we became a believer isn't as important as what we do with our faith when we were called to lead a Christian red life. Ever since I was little, I was taken to church by my family and taught about the Bible and church at Sunday school and at home. But it seems one thing that my mom and grandmother really wanted me to know is that being a Christian is more than saying, I believe in Jesus. Being a Christian is a way to live your life. Being a Christian means striving to be Christ-like every day in many different ways. One way is by showing my faith through my own actions, whether I'm at home, school, or wherever I happen to be. God gives us different talents and gifts that we can spread 
create humanity through all walks of life and affect as many people as possible. We may not always be aware, but we are always representing, representing sorry, uh, Christian, Christianity through everything we say and do. In Matthew 5, 14 through 16, Jesus tells us, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put, put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, you should let your light shine before others, and that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We are always being watched by other people, so since we are always represented, we should try and give a good example. I don't know what I want to do with my life at the moment, but I do know I want to continue to grow in my faith and be that light in the world. God has a plan for each and all of us. It may not make sense sometimes, but we have to, we have, to have faith in God. In Romans 8.28, Paul reminds us, we, and we need, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him and who have been called according to His purpose. I don't know where my plan will take me or what I'll make of it, but I do know I need to have faith that God is in control. My name is Ridgeway Jackson, and I'm in the 8th grade at Blue Ridge Middle. What you may not know is that I had a rough start. When I was born, I had a tear in one of my lungs, and then you know me. I spent 10 days in the EQ. My parents joked out of me a $65,000 baby. <laughs> my dad told me a story about what happened when he walked down to the EQ one night very late to see me. There was no one around in the halls and he broke down crying, questioning God why this was happening to him. The next thing he knew, he felt a large hand on his shoulder saying, and a man sang to him, Have faith, brother, and pray. He will answer your prayers. When my dad got up, after a few seconds, he looked around and the man was nowhere to be found. My dad said a peace came over him and he knew that I was going to be okay. To this day, we think of that man as a guardian angel and with the power of prayer can do. I have been attending Del Knox all my life. My entire family is here. My great aunt Julie baptized me when I was five months old on Father's Day. I attended Mother's Morning Out and I had the most patient teachers ever. Honestly, I never loved getting up early to go to church. And like most kids when I was younger, I would take a hymnal and a piece of paper and draw until it was time to go to church. Things seemed to change for me when I started going to started going to the junior high youth group. I started to listen more closely to the Word of God and the stories from the Bible. My very, my favorite verse comes from the Book of David, Psalms 27:1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? After reading that verse. I begin to think about true fear and what is it and what it is like to be really scared of something. I thought to myself, has there been a time I have truly experienced that? I quickly remember to ride a caravan that my dad and my sister and I did. We were put in harnesses and strapped together, posted up about 100 feet into the air, and we were dropped into a giant swing. As we were being pulled up, looking towards the ground, I thought about every little thing that could go wrong while suspended in the air, and then thought of that verse. I knew I needed to trust in the Lord and that He would take care of me as He always has. Even from the time when I was a sick baby. I gave my fear over to Him, trusting Him completely. I was able to enjoy the ride and found my new favorite ride at Caravans. I believe starting Christ school next year will bring many changes for me. I am sure that I will be tested at many levels. I know my love for this church and my faith that so many here have helped grow will pull me through challenges that I face, and for that, I'm grateful. There will be many more times when I'm afraid, doubt myself, or fear something, but I know that I can look towards God to guide me. Prayers can work your ways. I look forward to becoming a true member of John Knox, and I hope I can be a good steward. Thank you. Good morning, and happy Mother's Day. My name is Meredith Glass, and I go to Duck Academy. When I first came to John Knox, I was no more than a year old. Since then, my faith has strengthened in unimaginable ways, and I have tied closer and closer with God and the people of the church. 
Judge not, to, not for the day of coming to John Knox that I have not felt welcome. Coming to this church and learning and following the ways of my youth leader, the loving members, and the leaders and elders of the church has made a great impact on the faith I am grounded upon today. Knowing where God stands in my life when I feel lost has benefited me and taught me many concepts, concepts of life. I believe that God is like a rock for me when I am at my lowest. Psalm 18.2 reads, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. When I recall this verse, it reminds me that the Lord is always with me and has me right under his eye, keeping me safe, and I always remember that he has a sturdy foundation while I may be weak. This is also heard from verse 9, chapter 12 of 2 Corinthians. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. When it comes down to a normal day, I always try to remember that I am living for God, and what would He do when it comes to decision making? Um, I love referring to the phrase, what would Jesus do? My grandfather was a great influence on my faith growing up. We would visit, and he would always remind me that gratitude is a firm foundation to build a strong faith upon. He also showed me different aspects of nature. We would swing on the front porch overlooking God's creation or we would complete tasks. And he would give me reminders about discipline, gratitude, and that God created everything we take for granted in life. And how we should show our appreciation by expressing our faith in him and completing hard work. Jesus tells us to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. But he also says for us to love our neighbor as ourselves. The congregation and my youth leader have been a prime example of loving others as yourself. I love taking mission trips with my youth group because we give back to God and the community. Also, just for the pleasure of helping you learn more about what faith consists of. Over Christmas time 2014, I took a trip to the Trying Soup Kitchen and another to the Thornwall Home for Children with the, youth, with the Junior Youth High. At Trying, I expected to meet nice people and serve meals. My expectations were widely exceeded when I left meeting over 10 people, hearing personal stories and having a sense of happiness and faith to love inside that you can only receive when you give back to God. At Formal Home for Children, I met lots of young children and workers. I had the opportunity to spend the day with a nine-year-old girl named Joel. I learned her favorite movies and also her personal faith. I had never seen such strong faith at a young age, and this impacted me. After all the mission groups and church gatherings, I lay thinking about different ways to grow in my faith. In, all, in ways that I can help people strengthen theirs, and how others have mine. John Knox has been another home for me where I continue to grow through strength and the forgiveness of God, and the forever welcoming members of the church. Thank you. start out by reading a few words of scripture from Ephesians chapter 4. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Mary, we're so excited about your desire to join us in membership. We're so excited to have you come through baptism and to the now our elder Rhino Sullivan will present the candidate for baptism to the congregation. Rhino will come forward and introduce Meredith, and then in a little bit we will read the questions for the congregation to respond. On behalf of the session, I present Meredith Elizabeth Glass to receive the sacrament of baptism. Mary, the daughter of Ty and Lisa Glass, the sister of Natalie and Matthew. Now, Meredith, I'll ask you baptismal questions. Meredith Elizabeth Glass, do you desire to be baptized, do you? Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world, do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior? Trusting in his grace and love. 
love do you? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love, will you? Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to continue to guide and nurture Mary by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging her to know and follow Christ, and to be faithful members of this church? Do you? We do. Let us together join in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, we give you thanks. In countless ways you have revealed yourself in ages past and have blessed us with signs of your grace. We praise you that through the waters of the sea you led your people Israel out of bondage into the freedom of the land of promise. We praise you for sending Jesus, your son, who for us was baptized in the waters of Jordan and was anointed as Christ. Through the baptism of his death and resurrection, you set us free from the bondage of sin and death, and you give us cleansing and rebirth. We praise you that in baptism you give us your Holy Spirit who teaches us and leads us into all truth, filling us with a variety of gifts that we might proclaim the gospel to all nations and serve you as a royal priesthood. And so we pray, O oh God, that you would pour out your Spirit upon us and upon this water, that this font may be your womb of new birth. May all who pass through these waters be delivered from death to life, from bondage to freedom, from sin to righteousness. Strengthen those who walk through these waters to serve you, with joy until the day that you make all things new. To you, O oh God, we all praise, honor, and glory. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Here is Elizabeth Black, a child of the covenant. Benjamin Reese Jackson, Thomas Ridgeway Jackson IV, Ella August McCall, and Sarah Claire Mullis. You all are presented by our session and have made public your professions of faith, reaffirming the baptismal covenant into which you were baptized. We rejoice that you now desire to declare your faith and to share in our community of faith and its ministry. Through baptism, we enter into the covenant God has established. In that covenant, God gives us a new life. We're guarded from evil. We're nurtured by the love of God and His people. In embracing that covenant, we choose who we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. I ask you, therefore, to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which you were baptized. So to the class, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept Him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in His grace and love? Do you? I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciples, obeying His word and showing His love? Will you? And now, as a class and as a family of faith, let us all say what we believe using the familiar words of the Apostles' Creed found in your bulletin. Together, with one voice and with great faith and with great honor, let us say together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, Sit on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he 
shall not the just wait in the day. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of life, and the life everlasting. Amen. So to our class, you all may be seated. You have publicly professed your faith. Say that you will now be a faithful member of this congregation. You're going to share the ministry and worship of our family here. And through your prayers and gifts and your study and service, you will fulfill your calling as disciples of Christ. So I want to welcome you all now in the membership. Y'all are all grown up. You're part of our family. I've never been so proud of you. And I just thank y'all so much. And I want to ask all the members of the church afterwards to greet them at the narthex and, and give your well wishes and thank their mamas for such a good job. Welcome all.
Boldly tell people who you are and whose you are, who you follow in life. To be proud of the fact that you are called a person of faith, a child of Christ. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without falling with great joy. To the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore.